everybody, it's me, Lisa D again. I was just talking to my girl Macy from Round Rock. We got off on a really random topic. We were talking about how since cougars are like the number one predator in our area, why aren't there cougars everywhere? I mean, if there's nothing to eat the cougars, shouldn't they be taking over the highways, swarming the Alamo? Well, I explained to Macy why this never happens. Do you want to hear what we talked about? Yeah, you do. Well, first things first, there are different levels in an ecosystem. See down here? You've got your individual living his own life, doing his own thing. That's called an organism. So here's our individual cougar. Let's say his name is Connor the Cougar. So Connor doesn't live by himself, right? No, he lives with all his cougar buddies. That's called a population. A population is a group of individuals of the same species living in the same area. Here's that definition written for you here. So let's say that Connor lives in a camp with all of his easygoing cougar buddies. Here's Connor the Cougar's mellow camp. They're hanging out, pretty happy. Now let's make sure we go in order here. So I'm going to write down organisms right here, and above that, population. Remember, we're going larger as we go. So what's above population? Well, are there only cougars in the area? No, there's other species, plants and animals. So a collection of populations is called a community. We've written that down here. I'm going to show community up above population. Remember, bigger as we go. Ugh, gross. He's eating a porcupine. But we've got a porcupine here, we've got Connor over here, there's some plants over here, representations of different species, different populations, a community. Get it? Now, there's one last level of ecology. That's an ecosystem. Can you guess what an ecosystem is? Totally. An ecosystem is a collection of all the communities in the area. But it's not only that, it's not just the living communities, it's also the non-living factors of the area that make up the ecosystem. Ecosystems usually take up a lot of space, so we're going to put that at the very top, way up here, all right? Now, the living parts of an ecosystem are called the biotic factors. The non-living components are called the abiotic factors. Let's make a T-chart. We've got biotic over here, abiotic on the right, and this second row right here is going to show our definitions, living factors and non-living factors. But I think it'd be more useful to see some examples, don't you? All right, let's look at some examples. So what might be the living, the biotic factors of an area? Well, what about the plants, the animals that live there? Fungi too. What about abiotic factors? What about how hot or cold the ecosystem is? Or the type of soil? Uh, amount of rainfall is probably pretty important too. Now what about the number of insects? Would that be biotic or abiotic? Yeah, biotic. Insects are totally living, right? What about the population of blue bonnets? Biotic? Abiotic. Biotic again. Blue bonnets are alive too. What about how windy the area is? That would be abiotic. Wind is not alive, right? Now, the North Pole only receives sunlight six months out of the year. Biotic or abiotic? Yep, abiotic. But here's the deal. There's only so much to go around in any ecosystem. The blue bonnets have to fight other blue bonnets for space. The mice have to fight other mites for blue bonnets. Snakes have to fight other snakes and even birds for those mice. This is called competition. Whenever individuals try to get the same amount of resources, that's called competition. Let's write that down. Struggle to get the same resources. Individuals can compete against each other and populations can compete against other populations. So this is why there aren't cougars all over the place. Connor the cougar has to compete with other cougars for biotic factors like food. And cougars have to compete against other populations for abiotic factors like space and water. This means that our area can't support any more cougars. We are maxed out. Whenever an area can't support any other individuals, it's called its carrying capacity. Largest number of individuals an ecosystem can support. So that's why there aren't cougars all over the place. Our area must be at the carrying capacity for the cougar population. The biotic and abiotic factors around here limit the number that can live in this ecosystem. And you know what, I'm pretty cool with that because I think it'd be hard to get to school if you have to get through a thousand cougars on the way, don't you? Well, I guess that does it for me. Until I see you next time, it's Lisa D saying, if you're out studying the ecosystem, I hope you're the best in your field.